Okay, we're now going to look at nucleotide degradation. So in this particular slide we have AMP and GMP which are purines and these are first converted to adenosine and guanosine. So they lose their phosphate. AMP and GMP lose their phosphate. Next we get deamination which is a reversal of the synthesis. Uh, adenosine deaminase uh, removes NH2 from AM from adenosine and guanine deaminase does the same for guanosine. And then we have the removal of ribose by the enzyme purine nucleoside phosphorylase. So this is a, a flow diagram where we have shown that pyrimidine nucleosides which are broken down to beta alanine, carbon dioxide, beta amino isobutyrate and NH4. And these end products, there, there's four of them here, they, they, um, they don't, we don't tend to have problems with the metabolic disorders with the pyrimidine nucleosides because these are fairly soluble and um, beta alanine and beta amino isobutyrate can also be metabolized. Uh, beta alanine may be excreted, excreted in the urine and if it's metabolized it's transaminated and then converted to acetyl-CoA so you can answer the, the TCA cycle it could be used to synthesize lipids for example and beta amino isobutyrate can be transaminated and converted to succinyl-CoA and thereby, thereafter it can enter the, um, the TCA cycle. The purines, this is where we're likely to get problems because if we have something that's driving the production of uric acid then, then we have a buildup of uric acid in the joints, you get inflammation, you get pains, you get arthritis and, and you get a condition called gout. So PNP, as I said, removes ribose. So we can see it here. There's guanosine having its ribose removed and inosine having its ribose removed. So we have guanine and uh, hypoxanthine, which are then um, broken down. There's no evidence that PNP converts adenosine to adenine. So this diagram summarizes everything that I've been talking about so far. It shows adenosine being converted to inosine by deamination, which is catalyzed by adenosine deaminase. Uh, so there's the NH2 group that's removed. And then inosine having its ribose removed, a reaction that's catalyzed by PNP, which also acts here. It removes the ribose from guanosine. And then we have the formation of hypoxanthine. And the hypoxanthine can then form xanthine, which is then oxidized by xanthine oxidase to produce uric acid. Um, on the other side, we have guanosine, which has its ribose removed to form guanine, which is then deaminated by guanosine deaminase to produce xanthine, which is also channels into the production of uric acid. So we have two channels really forming the one product uric acid. So you can see why, why it can build up if there's excess amount of um, nucleotides, the pure nucleotides. And so how, how do you treat this and how do you stop it crystallizing and causing problems? Well, there's a, there's a, a drug, allopurinol, which inhibits xanthine oxidase. And, and that is used to treat gout. And this, this here is an example of a person that's suffering from gout. It's um, one of the symptoms is uh, it, uh, swelling in the big toe that's very painful. And that is caused by elevated amounts of urate, which uh, crystallizes in the joints. And the joints become inflamed and it's very painful and it's arthritic. And these crystals crystals can also accumulate in the tubules. Uh, gout is more common in men than women. That's because estrogen reduces a woman's level of uric acid by increasing excretion via the kidneys. And it's estimated that 1 in 70 of UK adults have gout. And if you look at just older people, um, so 1 in 14 older men, I, mean, I guess... If these days, if you're over 60 or so, you're old, maybe a little bit, maybe 55. 
and one in 35 older women. So you're quite likely to come across this if one in 14 older men have, have gout. And um, what causes it? Well, there could be different things. Um, you can have abnormalities in renal handling. So if there's something wrong with the exc excretion of uric acid. If you're eating a very rich diet, and this, this gout was common in the olden days um, when people used to feast on meat and, and wine, and uh, it was a, a disease of the rich because the poor people didn't have so much meat and they certainly couldn't afford the, the wine. So um, that's, that's one cause. And the genetic defects can also lead to gout. For example, if PRPP synthetase, which remember activates uh, uh, ribose, which drives the synthesis of purines and pyrimidines, if, if, if that is very active, then you get the production of um, purines and then they're broken down and, and they generate uric acid. I covered the leash nyhan syndrome when we looked at the salvaging of free purine bases. And uh, th this slide here, just to remind you that it's caused by the deficiency of this enzyme, HGPRT, which catalyzes these, these reactions here, these reversible reactions. So in, in the absence of purine bases being salvaged, they, they build up and they're broken down to uric acid, and that causes the buildup of uric acid. So to treat this, you need to do the same thing as you would do for gout patients. You give them malopurinol, which uh, stops the production of uric acid, so it doesn't crystallize, but it causes the buildup of the pre precursors of uric acid. And that helps to alleviate the, the problem. So we're left with one disorder that we haven't covered, and that's this one here, severe combined immunodeficiency otherwise known as SID. And this is the right place to look at it because it's concerned with the breakdown of nucleotides. There's a range of these um, syndromes, deficiencies, and um, we know of nine genes that are involved. We don't fully understand the whole spectrum of this um, deficiency syndrome, and we don't necessarily understand how the mutations in enzymes bring them about. But we know about nine genes, and there, there are probably quite a few more. But the, the ones we'll be looking at is mutations in adenosine deaminase, which knock them out, and mutations in purinucleotide phosphorylase that knock, knocks that out as well. And they're both involved in purine degradation. Um, ADA deficiency became to the, the four, around about 1971-1984 when um, David Ventner became famous because he had to live in a bubble, in a sterile environment. And uh, that this deficiency, ADA deficiency, made him very susceptible to the slightest uh, infection. And he actually did die of an infection. Um, so, so what's the story here with ADA deaminase deficiency and PNP deficiency. Well, you can see both of these uh, involved in the breakdown of adenosine and, and guanosine. And uh, looking at ADA deficiency first, if, if this enzyme isn't working, then there's a buildup here. And that could channel back into and lead to the production of deoxy ATP. And deoxy ATP actually switches off ribonucleotide reductase. And remember, ribonucleotide reductase takes all the um, dinucleotides and convert them into deoxydinucleotides, all of them except for uh, thymidine um, dinucleotide. And um, that switching off of ribonucleotide reductase is, is my explanation of how this may come about because your immune system, as I mentioned earlier, is, is reliant on the, the, the salvage pathway and ribonucleotide reductase is involved in the part of that salvage because it creates the deoxydinucleotides. And if you're unable to produce deoxydinucleotides, then you're unable to produce DNA, 
so your immune mis response can't kick into action when needed. And it's possible, um, a similar story happens with, with PNP, but deoxy GTP does not switch off ribonucleotide reductase, so it may not be as severe. So with ADA deficiency, we get a lack of virtually all immune protection and their neurological problems as uh, the person is growing up and death occurs at an early age. With um, PNP now, we've seen that it's, it's involved in the degradation of guanosine and it's also involved in the salvage of guanosine and adenosine. A defi deficiency will lead up to a buildup of deoxygTP, which would be toxic to the immune system exactly how we, we don't fully understand. So looking at this PNP deficiency, about two-thirds of individual with, individuals with PNP deficiency have neuro neurological problems that may include developmental delay, intellectual disability, difficulties with balance and coordination, and muscle stiffness. There's also increase of the autoimmune disorders.